Hey guys, welcome back to Carbon Tunes. In this series, we are looking at the chemistry syllabus. This is the very first topic in the chemistry syllabus, 1.1 section A, and this is the particulate theory of matter. So what we're going to do, we're going to define matter, define the particulate theory of matter, and then look at some simple examples that prove the particulate theory of matter. So what is matter? From primary school days, you probably have been swatting this definition. Matter is anything that has matter and occupy space well that is exactly correct matter is anything that has volume and mass so we're going to be looking at the particulate theory of matter now the particulate theory of matter has four main rules it says that matter is made up of particles i drew some particles here these are the particles that you would see in matter depending on the state and in the next video, we will be learning um, different states of matter. So matter is made up of particles, and these particles are in constant motion. So these particles are in constant motion. That's the second statement in the particulate theory of matter. All right. Now, if you notice. Between these particles that make up matter are some spaces. So we say that between the particles, there are some spaces. Spaces between the particles that make up matter. And the last statement says that there are forces of attraction between these particles. Now in the next video, you will learn that depending on the strength of the force of attraction, you can have different states of matter, solid, liquid, or gas. But today we're just going to point out that there are forces of attraction between these particles. The four statements in the particulate theory of matter state that it is made up of particles. These particles are in constant motion. There are spaces between these particles and there are also forces of attraction exerted between these particles. Now we're going to look at a really easy experiment that helps to prove the particulate theory of matter. This is diffusion. Now we say that diffusion is the movement of particles from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration until evenly distributed. So let me show you here. If you have some gas and it's in high concentration here, this is um, the similar way that your air fresheners work. So we have an air freshener and it's releasing some fumes here. It's going to move from the region of high concentration, which is at the source, to the region of low concentration. There's no over here, so the particles move in this direction to the region of low concentration until the particles are evenly distributed. So that's what we say diffusion means. Okay, great. So here we have an experiment. And in this experiment, we are soaking some cotton swabs, one with ammonia gas and one with hydrogen chloride gas. And in this reaction, as the gases diffuse, they form ammonium chloride in the center. Before we explain all of that, I'm just going to identify the labels in this diagram. So this is what we call like a rubber bomb or a stopper. And it just prevents the gases from escaping um, in the opposite direction. We also have another rubber bomb we're stuck over here. This is the ammonia gas soaked in a cotton swab. Ammonia gas as NH3 soaked in a cotton swab. This is hydrogen chloride gas concentrate soaked in another cotton swab. And this is the ammonium chloride that is formed from the reaction. So what happens here is when you saw the ammonia in the cotton swab, it's at high concentration at the end of the ammonia cotton swab. So the particles are moving from a region of high concentration, which is this swab, to a region of low concentration, which is the opposite end. The same goes for the hydrogen chloride. The cotton swab is soaked in some hydrogen chloride, so this swab is high, has a high concentration of, um, hydrogen, of hydrogen chloride. So it's moving from a region of high concentration. Let me draw arrows. So hydrogen chloride moving from a region of high concentration 
to low concentration this way. And ammonia is a moving from regional high concentration to regional low concentration this way. So what you would notice is that ammonia has traveled a greater distance than the hydrogen chloride. Why? Ammonia is lighter than hydrogen chloride, so it travels faster. Simple. So what we have here is when the hydrogen chloride and the ammonia meet, they form to produce ammonium chloride, which is usually a white solid. So we have diffusion from the high concentration, diffusion from the high concentration, and they meet and they react to form ammonium chloride. So these experiments help us to know that there is actually diffusion taking place because if there wasn't, the ammonia and the hydrogen chloride wouldn't be able to react to form ammonium chloride in the test tube. Okay, so we can write an equation for this experiment. We can say ammonia, which is NH3, plus hydrogen chloride gives oops gives ammonium chloride N H four C L and this is this is a solid okay great so what we're going to do here, we're going to look at another example of diffusion, a really simple example, um, sugar crystal dissolving in water. So here we have a sugar crystal and it's very compact and this is before it dissolves in water. Remember, the, this would be our region of high concentration and this is our region of low concentration. So what happens? is the sugar crystals will move from the region of high concentration and dissolve in the liquid to the region of low concentration. So it gets smaller as the particles break off and move into the region of low concentration, which is the liquid or the water. Okay, last, osmosis. Now, osmosis is very similar to diffusion, but there's a big difference, and this is it. So we say osmosis is the movement of particles from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. But this happens through what we call a semi-permeable membrane. A semi-permeable membrane is something like a strainer, it allows, or a filter, it allows some particles to come through and some not to come through or pass through. So we say osmosis is the movement of particles from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration through a semi-permeable membrane, which is like a barrier, until even the distribution. This experiment is um, a bag of sugar water inside a semi-permeable membrane, and this was submerged in some dilute sugar water. So the one inside the bag is very concentrated, and the one outside the bag is very dilute. Now the only thing that's separating the sugar water inside the bag from outside the bag is the membrane. Now, remember we said that semi-permeable membranes allow some things through and it doesn't allow other particles through. So water is small enough to pass through the semi-permeable membrane, but sugar isn't. So in this case, we won't have sugar moving from the region of high to low concentration. But what we will have is the water moving from the region of high to low concentration. If we have dilute solution or sugar water and concentrated sugar water, which one do you think has more water in it? The dilute sugar um, solution. So the water is going to move from the dilute sugar solution where it's in high concentration into the concentrated sugar solution. And as this happens, the level or the amount of solution in the bag increases. So you're going to see a rise in the amount of water in the bag. And this simply happens because it's trying to make the concentration of the sugar equal. So because the sugar can't move through the semi-permeable membrane, the water is doing the job for it and it's passing through the semi-permeable membrane from the region of high concentration to the region of 
low concentration. Okay, great. Now the last example, we're going to use snails. Now before we look at this example, it's very important that we understand how snails function. Now snails have a layer of moisture outside their body to keep them moist, right? So when you throw salt water, or when you throw salt on a snail, you're throwing salt on the snail that's eating a plant, you throw salt on the snail, what happens is that this salt dissolves in the layer of moisture around the snail. Now this layer of moisture becomes concentrated in salt and inside the snail is dilute in salt. So what happens is water moves out of the snail into the concentrated solution outside of the snail. Why? Because they're trying to make the concentration equal. So as the water moves out of the snail into the, into the layer of water that is around the snail that's high in salt concentration, he starts to shrink and he eventually dies. So let's recap really briefly. Particulate theory of matter. Matter is anything that has mass and volume. The particulate theory of matter says that mass is made up of particles. These particles are in constant motion, they have spaces between them, and they have forces of attraction between them. Diffusion is the process by which particles move from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration until evenly distributed. We have a reaction between ammonia and hydrogen chloride to give you ammonium chloride, which is a white solid. Also, we have osmosis, which is the movement of water molecules from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration through a semi-permeable membrane until evenly distributed. Alright, so that wraps up this video, guys. Tune in for the next one. Bye!